name is Kara and I'm part of the HSS family. I'm a physical therapist and a yoga teacher. And as you can see, I'm at home socially distancing. Yoga can be an incredible tool for us right now for multiple reasons. Yoga helps us connect our mind, our body, and our breath, which in times of stress and anxiety can be helpful in coming back to our baseline and homeostasis. Also, yoga can help with mobility and flexibility. We are not moving as much as we're used to, and our bodies are feeling it. Also, many of us are working from home in suboptimal postures because we have a suboptimal workstation. Yoga can help you to increase your flexibility and prevent aches and pains from working at home. So today, I want to teach you some tricks and tips that you can use for a safe practice while you're using yoga at home. I'm sure you don't have all the props that yoga studios do, and we need them. And that's because we come in all shapes and sizes, and we have variable levels of flexibility and mobility. Props help us maintain neutral posture and a neutral position in our joints to prevent the potential of injury. So, I'm going to show you some household items you can use to modify as props during your practice. First, we're going to talk about a yoga belt. So we use a yoga belt in class to lengthen our arms. In staff pose, for instance, our legs are stretched out. In order to connect our hands to our feet, we need a whole lot of flexibility in the hamstring. If you don't have that flexibility, the chances are is you're gonna to try to still get there and potentially put load on your back or put your spine in a suboptimal posture. So one way to help correct that is the yoga belt. It'll attach to my feet, lengthening my arms. Those are my artificial arms. I'm gonna find length and sit tall in an inhale and then on an exhale as I'm leaning forward, I'm going to maintain neutral position in my spine, allowing the stretch to occur where it should at the hamstrings instead of loading my back. Now, if you don't have a yoga belt, a towel will do the trick. So I'm gonna wrap my towel around and again, stay long first as I inhale, and then as I exhale, I'm gonna hinge at my hips, protecting my back. Other tools you can use are a bathrobe strap or a dog leash. My dog's actually vacationing in Florida right now, sadly, uh, but she's safe and healthy there with my parents. So I uh, have the dog leash available as well, but most of us have a towel. Next is a yoga block. So, the yoga block has various levels. It has a medium level, a short level, and a tall level. We can use this in a few different ways. If we're sitting in a cross-legged position and our hips are tight, tendency is, is that your hips won't drop so your knees stay up and your body will try to round to compensate for that, to try to find balance in the sitting position. No bueno on our back. So, what we can do is use a yoga block. So, I'm gonna sit on my block, which allows my knees to drop, which increases the angle at my hips to allow me to sit in a more upright posture. And this can be utilized if you're meditating uh, or maybe sitting in the beginning of a class while you're listening to your teacher. Alternatively, blocks are used to connect your hand to the ground when you're missing a bit of that end range flexibility. So for instance, in side angle, I'm gonna come into a lunge, apologies if I get cut off. And I'm thinking about stacking my knee over my ankle, so I have a 90 degree angle at my knee, and then I'm pressing firmly into my back foot. Now, if I can't get to the ground by myself, I'll use my yoga block. And now, I have more stability, I'm able to put pressure through this hand as I reach my other hand up looking to maintain a little bit more of uh, a lengthened position, and then it's gonna allow me to twist slightly deeper into this posture, which is a bit of a twist. So here I have length both vertically as I inhale, I think about elongating my spine, and then I ground into my bottom hand as I exhale to reach up and back, coming into that side angle posture. 
So a few things you can use at home. A book for the short position. Some old fashioned oats for the medium position. And maybe some laundry detergent pods. Now you have to be careful if there is uh, plastic that the container's made from. It might withstand some pressure, but obviously you wouldn't put your full body weight on it. Also be mindful not to use anything that has glass for obvious reasons. Next is a yoga ball. So teachers may ask you to release or do a self massage before you stretch certain muscles in class. So a yoga ball can be used to stretch things like, or to release things like your pec, your lat, or even the bottom of your foot. If you don't have one of these handy, a tennis ball will do the trick. Lastly, we'll talk about a blanket. In yoga, you can use a blanket to decrease friction. So let's say you're going into a split posture. You might wanna slide that back leg out. This will help decrease the friction. Also, it helps to add weight to your body. So in Savasana, which is corpse pose, that's how we typically end class, putting a little bit of weight helps you connect deeper to the ground and then helps you connect to your breath and relax your body a bit more easily. Also, it helps as you're rehabilitating from an injury. For instance, let's say I'm coming back to yoga after a knee injury and bending my knee all the way still causes some pain when I'm putting pressure on it. In poses like child's pose, which is supposed to be very restful, that can become very painful. So what we're gonna do is use a blanket and it's gonna go between my thigh and my lower leg. So now when I sit back, I have a bigger angle. It doesn't put so much pressure on my knee and allows me to actually rest in child's pose position. Now, I'm sure this isn't a big surprise to you. If you don't have a yoga blanket, a regular blanket will do the trick. That's all I got. Thank you so 